It's Unstable Topic with Sarah and Maggie. Hey, bestie. Hi, bestie. So we have slugs in the Adams household. <gasps> Inside? Inside. It's been a slug dimmick here um, for about a month. And I don't know. I don't. First it was ants and the ants are gone. And now we got slugs. And it's very traumatic. And it's so traumatic. Here's how, here, here is how these slugs have ruined a lot of our time. So we had slugs. We saw the slug trail. I'm like, okay, let's get some slug bait. And so Jamie went out and got slug bait and went outside and like poured the slug bait everywhere. And before he did that, I go, is this safe for dogs? Because we have a dog. Yeah. He goes, yeah, the box says it's fine. I'm like, okay, I trust you. So that was in the morning. And later that day, our dog, Lady Squirrel, couldn't jump off the bed. She wouldn't eat. She was kind of shaking. She wouldn't get on her paws. And I'm like looking at the slug box and it says safe for around dogs. If it's ingested, it's dangerous. So then I start Googling and like your dog will die from (gasps) slug bait. Your dog is going to get paralyzed and die. Oh, my gosh. And this is this is a Saturday. So I'm like, Jamie, we have to take her to the emergency vet. It's the slug poison. It's this, and Jamie's freaking out. He's like, I, I've potentially killed our dog because of slugs. So it's like seven o'clock at night. He has to drive her like 45 minutes away. He gets there and he sends me a picture and home girl is sitting up next to him in the chair smiling. And so they get her in the back. He tells her, and they're freaking out too. We have to like call animal poison control and you have to pay like $95 just to talk to them. Of course. And they're like, okay, is she experiencing these things? She's like, no, 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 no. And like, well, we don't think it's slug poisoning. I'm like, but she couldn't move. And then she starts wagging her tail. She's jumping up and down. Homegirl is living her best life at the vet with just Jamie. Yeah, treats. One on one time, no and kids. Vet, yeah, and the vet comes in and she like hurt her shoulder or something because she's part corgi, and so she's low to the ground, and so they yeah. think like she hurt or bruised her muscle. And he's like, she's fine. And so three hundred and fifty dollars later, Jamie comes home and cleans up all the slug trees. So the slugs still have rule over our roost. No. <laughs> Along How did they it, get yeah. inside? I mean, I'm glad Lady Squirrel is good. Yeah, she's right? fine. Like, I'm glad she's fine. I'm still caught up on like slugs. In they're inside the house. like they slugged their way into the house, mm-hmm. and so we're up here being home. Right. So our garage is lower than our house, and so they come up those stairs. <gasps> they're coming up the stairs. They're slugging their way in. Ah. Oh. Go and other... away, slugs. And I, Jamie, you know how I stepped on a cockroach in the shower that one time? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Jamie stepped on a slug. Oh. oh he had socks no. on, though. Oh. He had socks That's on. almost worse. That's almost <laughs> worse on fabric. So, so um, I haven't seen the slugs. Jamie has seen them because um, they, they come about night. And the other day I was in the bathroom. I looked down. And creeping out from our baseboard in our bathroom are these two little antennae. No. And like, what is that? And out crawls a teeny tiny slug. About an inch big, maybe a little bit less. And it's thin. It's not thick. And it sticks his little head up and it's looking around. You see him looking and it's like, oh, I'm going to go up this way. Completely disregarding for the fact that this isn't his room. This is not his space. No. Go to your home, slug. Which is not this home. This is not this home. You know what's interesting? <sighs> slugs to me are grosser than snails. Yes. Just like rats are grosser than mice. Yes. You know, like yes. if I saw a mouse in my house, would I scream? Yes, of course. I would scream. I would scream bloody mm-hmm. murder. Yeah. But then I would be like, oh, but it's like a little field mouse. If I saw a rat in my house, I would scream and then I'd – I don't even know what I would do. I, I don't I would, know. I I would be like, take that cigar out of your mouth. Get out of this house. You do not belong here. That's my pizza. Get. Put it down. Yeah. 
same with like I think I mean slugs though I would rather see a slug I think than a cockroach even though cockroaches in Texas are just like everywhere huge. you can't they're huge and they're literally like you can't especially because we live in like 1960s homes mm -hmm. right and I feel like cockroaches have just been here since day one like they 100%. it's the original owner of the house uh, they could probably make that argument in court and we'd be kicked out yeah, like we're, this, we're the squatters. This, we're the squatters. This legally goes to the cockroach or the slug, whichever one has been here longer. And then we have to pay like back rent or something to them. Classic. Yeah, it'd be awful. I would hate to have a cockroach or a slug for a landlord. They would be the worst. They'd be the worst. I'd be like, this place is infested with cockroaches. And they'd be like, it's called home. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> All right, Maggie, are you ready for your fact? I am. Did you know the human nose can remember 50,000 different scents? Wow. 50,000? Mm hmm. Because you know how your sense of smell is connected to memories? Like you smell something. You're like, oh, that is this, and you see a vision in your in your mind's eye if your eyes are closed. Yeah, that's 50, interesting. Thousand different scents. Wow, what's a? I mean, this might be a react question, but what's a scent that you that you like that you like brings you home? That is not. It's close to the react, but it's okay. not. Um, a scent that brings me home. It's my mother's perfume. Mm -hmm. Like when I smell her perfume, because she's been wearing the same one for a very long time, I'm like, ah, oh, okay. Like if I'm out in public, I'm like, oh, that's my mom. Yeah. I need to get a, a scent. I thought that's about mine. that, Maggie. Mm -hmm. That I need to I've, get a scent. <laughs> yes. You're like, I Maggie thought about that for you. needs a scent. I thought what about that smell? for me. Yeah. Like, I want I want to have an aroma, but this is this might be really weird, but I've been breastfeeding, right? Walter and Annie, and I'm always like, if I put perfume on is that gonna like maybe it's a good thing maybe i'll try perfume and start deterring my child deterring. from <laughs> yeah that's how you wean you wean by perfume well i gotta tell you my almost two-year-old is still nursing and it's not something that i was trying to do you know i wasn't trying to nurse till two um wasn't really trying to nurse past one or even two one. It wasn't like something that I had as a thing I had to do as a mom. Um, and I've been trying to get this kid off my tittles for a while. I put vinegar on my nipples. <laughs> I read Family about it. Show. Like, yeah, yeah. Oh, this is fine. This is family. This is feeding a child. Um, just like a cow. Didn't deter him. Didn't deter him at all can't get this kid off he's gonna I be think... seven and not eating snacks if you know what i mean <laughs> uh annie must be on oh, annie must be on the robbie plan because again this is not something that i set out to do this is not a goal of mine annie is six months younger than robbie so she's about to be a year and a half soon and yeah. i'm like this is not a goal. This is not something I aimed for. And the thing that gets me about these kiddos is she could take a bottle from my mom. No problem. No problem. You get her in our house and she could smell you. She could smell me. I was out. I told you this. I was outside the other day. Strategically, Jamie and I look, like, look, you sneak her in for bath and then take her in. And I'm going to stay out here and we're not going to let her know what's going on. And you're going to try and put her down for bed. Homegirl lost her mind for 10 straight minutes. I don't hear anything because I'm outside, right? Mm -hmm. Where the slugs and the cockroaches should be. And I go inside and I hear because <gasps> <gasps> she can't catch her breath because she's been crying so hard. Yeah. It's because she, that's the thing is our distinct scent right now uh. is mother's milk. <laughs> that's our smell, which is not, <laughs> again, a scent that I have chosen for myself. It has been bestowed upon me. Yeah, we did not choose this choose this flavor of smells. And, and it's are, fine. It's if, fine. If people is wanna, it though? I think what it is is like if people want to do that, I'm like, yes, go do that. Like I love it. I love however however people feed their kid. Formula, Great. breast breast milk, Wonderful. whatever it is. 
And if you want to do it for a year, if you want to do it for three years, that's on you. I am just making it known that for me personally, Mm. I have not chosen this life. Mm -mm. It's chosen you. It has chosen me. So are you ready to react? I am. So it's similar to what you've already asked, but twisted just a little bit. So we talked about how the human nose can remember 50,000 different scents. Mm -hmm. If your nose could forget one scent, what would it be? Ooh. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know what scent I – I mean, I'm sure this is not controversial, but the smell of – vomit is ah, that's what that's mine too yeah can't do it and it can't and do it <laughs> when we were driving when arthur my middle child was four months old we drove from texas to north carolina and it, it this ties into nursing too and formula and we were driving and it was going great and then i gave him a bottle of formula because we're driving and should be fine he could not take it and he threw up all over the car. Mm. We were like an hour away from our Airbnb. All over the car, all over me, all over his car seat. And that's hard to get out, you know, that smell. Yeah. So we it were is. on, I mean, for like weeks, the car smelled like it, even after scrubbing and spray and all of it. And I couldn't get it out. And you know why? Because feeding babies is hard. <laughs> As to Earth signs, Sarah and Maggie are always preparing, which is why it's time to play Till Death Do Us Part. Aww, why? The game where they interview potential replacement besties in case the other one kicks the can. All right, Sarah, this potential bestie needs no introduction because she is famously known as the artist behind our podcast intro song. But I will share some tidbits anyway. She teaches rock vocals and performance for kids. She will be teaching a lyric writing camp this summer. And she is one of my mom heroes for how endlessly creative and cool she is. Sarah, meet Summer Berman. Summer. It's so nice to officially meet you on as a guesty bestie. I was just saying, I hear your voice every day. So is, this is this is awesome. I mean, technically, I'm going to score you, but untechnically, I mean, you're kind of, they're kind of in. <laughs> She's like, score away. Go for okay. it. Okay. I'm here to, I'm playing to win, just so you know. I've done some research. Okay. Well, let's dive in. I'm ready. Let's I've do it. I've got a question for you that's a tricky one, but I, I feel like you'll be able to handle it. So- all right. So I your first Huckleberry. met Let's you go. at Dallas Comedy House when you were the cool mom bringing your kids to improv camp and also bringing the teachers donuts, which got me thinking, in your experience as a cool mom, what's a better treat to win over teachers' hearts, surprise donuts in the morning, or a Starbucks gift card just because? Okay. One, if... I'm like the coolest mom. You gotta meet more people, Sarah. Can we work on this? Because if this is the bar, that just makes me feel sorry for you. We need to. I'm it sorry, is. But you are the pinnacle. pinnacle. You are really it's just cool. chaos. You are really cool. Well, that's just that's. Thank you. That's not okay, but we'll work on it. Okay. I've actually put way too much thought into this. It's tough because. I don't want to, I know I have to pick a would you rather, but some people don't do coffee. Like my husband's a Diet Coke guy. So a Starbucks coffee card would be wasted on him. But then you get educators like my son's teacher, who's wonderful. I love her, but she's diabetic. So yeah. if I brought her a box of donuts, it's like, here, die. You, so I, I know I'm supposed to answer something. You know what? The correct answer is do wow. your research. Wow. Know your, know your audience. That's the answer. Wow, Summer. Know, to, know your audience. That is a, that is unexpected and delighted to hear that. I will say, as a non-coffee drinker, I love a Starbucks gift card what for two of- reasons. One, they have great lemonade there. You can get great snacks. And my son loves their cake pops. So it's like, oh, yes. this is perfect. I can keep this in my car. And when I'm like, my son's doing things that I'm like, oh, let's get a cake pop if you make some good choices. <laughs> See, this is good. And you just highlighted a huge hole in my argument is uh, my husband, Doug's not a Starbucks guy. 
So guess who gets that gift card? Someone always wins with a gift card. Someone always wins. But I do, I do think that that is something it's true. Is that you do. It's you, true. You know your audience, and like Sarah, you're a good, thoughtful gift giver. So, gosh, this seems like a connection here is being made. Thank you. I think so. It's happening. All right, summer. It's happening, right. people. It's happening. Here is my very um, serious. So we're gonna change, change it up a bit. We're getting, we're getting serious. We're getting. Down I'm try to with this ser- I don't think I have that gear, but let's try summer. it. If given face. a choice, would you rather be trapped in an elevator with an acapella group or trapped in an elevator with a high school jazz choir? Oh, okay. Okay. This one I can do. One, the idea of being trapped in an elevator is horrible because I always have to pee. So... The first thing I'm meeting, I'm like, what's that situation? Once we get that handled, I'll live in here. But <laughs> where's that going? Sorry, I started gross. Anyway, I would have to go with the high school jazz choir because acapella groups, like, well, it depends on the tier of acapella groups. If I'm trapped in there in pentatonics, then my world is going to, like, implode on myself because I'm going to see all my insecurities and shortcomings and, like, these wonderful, talented people. And I'm not emotionally strong enough to handle that. Whereas with the kids, all you have to do is go, I sang once, you guys are amazing. And then you've totally boosted their confidence. So I'm going to go, I'm going to go High with, I think I can get more done with door number two. Okay. That's the right well, answer. I like choir, I think. And then I can also have them teach me like the cool slang and be like, all right, I know what Riz means. Okay, tell us. What what should I be saying and what should I not be saying? Tell and us. And then they can decide the if they want to use that against Riz me. Means. Okay, you know Charlie B. Maggie knows Charlie B because that's how we met is when Charlie B, who's about to turn 12. Yeah, that's hard. I gave Maggie a minute to process yeah. that because that's a rough one. Um, was what, four or five? Sorry, going. And so she knows. Well, now she came home saying that there's a, fr- a guy friend of hers, but it's not like a romantic thing. She's not ready for that. But they keep saying, uh, what is it? W Riz. And I was gearing up for what Riz meant because any sort of short, thing like that associated with dating when I was in high school was not good. But apparently Riz oh. is short for charisma. So if you are W Riz, I'm sure I'm butchering this. I'll check my work with B later. If you're W Riz, that means you're winning at charisma and usually it's by getting some sort of romantic. Like, like I love shit. that. I, I'm going to be I risen have, all I day. That. You're risen. No. I was like, that's gorgeous. You're risen. That, I don't think that's I don't think that's the proper way to use I, that I in a sentence, Maggie. <laughs> We're all risen over here. We're risen. Yeah, I don't. Risen. I don't think <laughs> is. I just had a flash. This is so bad. Apologies. I absolutely respect re- religion for uh, sure, but I, you know, the crosses, the He is risen crosses that you see at Easter. I kind of want to get a I she's mean, risen cross for my yard. Than Christ. Yard. And I don't think that's, that's true. I don't think there's. A... No. How is that? Think... Okay, there you go. I want to make sure I'm not being blasphemous, but just like a she is risen and it's got the apostrophe, that, like honestly. the N apostrophe. Yeah. No, I think that's great. <laughs> okay, good. I feel better. Um, I'm just like... I do have one more question for you, Summer. So you're obviously a very talented singer, songwriter, and lyricist. I mean, just listen to the jingle at the top of this show. Yeah. It's unstable. Yes. Three words to you it and you gave to you me to start with. So yes, uh, I did but that. But in your expert opinion, who do you think is Thank a you. stronger lyricist? Taylor Swift, whose music is blaring on every millennial woman's sound system as we speak, or... Lynn manuel Miranda, whose songs on Encanto yes. and Hamilton won't stop playing in my home. Okay, this is a, this may be considered a hot take, at least that's how, when I say it, I've gotten it back. I, I'm gonna start with Miranda first. I respect everything he's done. We watched Encanto and it is incredible. That said, listening to his songs, raises my normally incredibly low blood pressure. It just ticks up something about it. Okay. I like that you're nodding because everyone looks at me like I'm nuts. And I'm like, I, it's not that I dislike it. Incredibly talented. I love the wordplay. I love the vibe, all of it. 
But even just talking about it, I need to check my Fitbit because, yep, my pulse is like going up. Something about it. And that's probably what links. I think that's probably what a lot of people like is the energy. But something about it is so frenetic, which is usually my jam. But so, so as far as talent goes. But Taylor Swift does what she does. You know what? I'm giving it to T Swift because she started. I don't know Lynn Manuel's Manuel Vermont. Lynn Manuel Miranda's history, yeah, but like T Swift started this when, when she was like what three? Came out, I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Which meant absolutely. she wrote a whole bunch of garbage before that. You get to like the good stuff. So I'm gonna give it to T Swift, but that is no shade on Lynn Manuel Miranda. Much in the way that I am not a Beatles fan, there's something wrong with me. No, there's something, but I know it's deficient in not me. You. The Beatles are wonderful. Just whatever that thing is. It's okay. There's there's a missing. I'm all right with it. I don't need it. It's like being left handed. I don't need to be right handed. I don't need to like the Beatles. But I realize that that's not judging the mass people. It's not one of those contrarian things like you you like that. It's like no, just whatever that all right. Brain let piece me is, tabulate real quick. It never formed. Carry the five divided by Taylor Swift. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, it is official summer. I would be honored and thrilled if something were to happen to Maggie and Mai's friendship if you could step in her shoes and replace her. Thank you so much. See, but I would be so sad if something happened to this friendship. So maybe I can be like your emotional support summer where if anything starts going sideways, I just come in and like pet your head. I check on you first and bring the appropriate snack. And then we just keep this thing together because then yes. you both will need me all the time. It. And that's really a more diabolical approach. You are it's really great. good that. at, at taking these yeah. would you rathers and turning them into a yes and situation, which I appreciate. Uh, and I wonder, but I, I would wonder love where you, do you have anything, uh, where can people find you on the internet or things coming up you'd like to share for people to know about? I'm, I'm one of those people who's perpetually working on the thing that doesn't quite happen just yet, but hopefully this is, we went to coffee and talked about this, um, but hopefully this is the year that changes. So this is actually giving me some really good ideas. So go to summer underscore M as in what should uh, M stand for? Magic. It's Michelle, which magic. is boring. Let's come up with something else. <laughs> oh, okay. I was thinking like monkey shines, but let's do it. Summer underscore M underscore Berman, B-E-R-M-A-N, because people want to throw a U in there. Um, Yeah, Summer underscore M underscore Berman on Instagram. There's shenanigans going on there, and hopefully I'll crystallize into something where I can do more of this. Thank you so much, Because it's fun talking to homies like you. Thank you. This was really fun. You guys keep going. I love watching everything you guys do. I'm your biggest, biggest, biggest fan. Thank you so much for joining us. If you enjoyed this episode, we would love a review, subscribe, or for you to share this with a friend you think would like it. Or all three of those things. You can do all three and make our day and help us grow.